The nominee being considered right now, Nancy Abudu, Senator Lee did a good job of walking through her extreme record. She was the deputy legal director at the Southern Poverty Law Center, an organization that has a long and shameful history of labeling mainstream conservative groups as, quote, hate groups. And the SPLC's history is so egregious that it prompted a violent hate crime. In 2010, the SPLC designated the Family Research Council as a hate group, and two years later, a man targeted the, the Family Research Council using the SPLC's hate map and came in and shot and critically wounded the council's business manager and attempted to murder several council members before being heroically stopped by the building security guard. The SPLC in 2019 authored an article that accused Republicans, including three members of this committee, of holding, quote, open white supremacist views. Mr. Chairman, that's ridiculous. You know that's ridiculous. Political rhetoric is one thing. But when you have extreme leftists falsely claiming white supremacy, it illustrates that you are dealing with radicals and partisan zealots. Nancy Obodo isn't the only nominee that this committee is trying to move forward. This committee also has before it Nusrat Chowdhury, who is another extreme zealot. Ms. Chowdhury believes that America is through and through an evil and racist place. And she's not been shy about explaining that. She has stated that, quote, the structure of racial discrimination in America, quote, is so deep, so pernicious that you have to, quote, use the law as a tool of social justice. Does anyone think she's going to stop, quote, using the law as a tool of social justice if she ascends to the bench? most concerning thing Ms. Chowdhury said is she participated in a panel at my alma mater, Princeton University. The panel was entitled How Activism Informs Policy. And one of the panelists there suggested that police officers kill unarmed black men every day. Now, there's a technical term for that statement. That's called a lie. It's not even kind of sort of right. It is wildly, totally false. During her nomination hearing, she was asked about a tweet that came from that event which said that she had agreed with the statement that police officers kill unarmed black men every single day. At first, she claimed she couldn't remember making the statement. Then later in the same hearing, she claimed she did make the statement, but she did so, quote, as an advocate. She said so three separate times. Well, I just, you know, did it as an advocate. Now, most of the members of this committee have practiced law. The last I checked, as an advocate, you have an obligation not to lie. And that is a brazen lie that is dangerous. Now, subsequently, she sent a follow-up letter after her hearing saying, oh, never mind, I didn't say it. The thing that she had justified as, oh, I said it as an advocate. Afterwards, she sent a letter and said, no, actually, I didn't say it. Republicans on this committee asked for a follow-up hearing to, to ask about her miraculous new memory post-hearing that she didn't say such a harmful thing to police officers across the country. Sadly, the chairman wouldn't give us a new hearing. Another of, of the judges being considered today Kenya, Kenley Kia Cato. At her hearing, I asked her a very simple question. Is racial discrimination wrong? She was utterly unable to answer it. Today's Democrat Party embraces racial discrimination, believes that discriminating based on race, the reason, Mr. Chairman, and your, 
you, you are smirking, but the reason she, she couldn't answer it is because in law school, she had written an article advocating racial discrimination against Asian Americans. Now, Ms. Cato is Asian American. And she said, and I'm paraphrasing here, I don't, I don't have the article in front of me, but she essentially said that Asian Americans who didn't support explicit racial discrimination against rate Asian Americans weren't sufficiently woke. They weren't sufficiently enlightened. Now, I think that's a noxious position, but that's, of course, why she couldn't answer that racial discrimination was wrong, because she is an advocate for racial discrimination. Another one of the nominees being considered this morning is Dale Ho. Dale Ho is a self-described, quote, wild-eyed sort of leftist. Now, let me be clear. That's not my terminology. That's how he describes himself. He says, I am a, quote, wild-eyed sort of leftist. He wrote about how he's motivated each day by his hate for conservatives. That's the word he used, hate. Now, I want you to pause for a second and imagine, I'm going to ask the Democrat members of this committee to do something, which is imagine you're in somebody else's shoes. Engage in empathy. There are actually conservatives in the state of New York. Now, the Democrat governor of New York said to Republicans in New York, you're not New Yorkers. Get the hell out. Go to Florida where you belong. There's an arrogance to telling your voters that. But it's one thing when you're an elected official, if you want to demonstrate that kind of arrogance, but one would think that a federal judge has a different obligation. So I would ask the members of this committee, imagine for a second you were a Republican. Imagine for a second you were a conservative who happened to live in New York City. And you look up in New York City on the federal bench and you see a judge who's described himself as a wild eyed sort of leftist, his own words, who is motivated every day, who gets up every day. And what gets him going is his hatred for you. You know, this is the kind of fellow that should have worked at the Southern Poverty Law Center. That's the kind of radicals who this administration is nominating. And yet that is not the kind of person that should be a federal 